Is it covered or not? Why does it seem like it's covered in this part of the policy, but not in this part? In this video, get a full explanation of policy exclusions in an HO3 property policy, starting now. Hey, what's up? Get instant free access to my complete beginner's guide to getting work as an independent adjuster right now at adjustertv.com slash start. Okay, let's get after it. So both coverage A and coverage B are subject to the ex sec exclusion section one, which basically says, oh, and by the way, here's a bunch more stuff that isn't covered. Okay. So in exclusion section one, part A, it says the following exclusions apply to coverage A dwelling uh, and coverage B personal property, property and coverage C loss of use and the supplementary coverages. Okay. With what that means is, is basically under exclusions, um, water damage from flood, right, right here is not covered, period, end of story. And you can't get coverage for the house. You can't get coverage for any personal property that was damaged. And you can't, if, even if the house is like washed away by the flood or is made unlivable by the floodwaters, you cannot get ALE, loss of use. Make sense? Um, so that's what the 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 uh, exclusion section wants to do is to kind of like say, and these are the broad things that absolutely are not covered under any circumstances, right? Um, such again, such loss is excluded regardless of any other cause or event contributing concurrently in any sequence to the loss, right? Which is why here's a perfect example of this: Hurricane Katrina and the the bazillion lawsuits that went flying after this. So adjusters, and I wasn't one of them because I did all mobile homes and commercial stuff on K Katrina, but on residential HO policies, um, if the house had adjusters trying to trying to make determinations of what the, f the storm surge caused, which is surface water, and what the wind caused, on the HO policy, on the homeowner's policy, you can't pay for the surface water the storm surge, unless they have, you know, if they have a flood policy, then that would pay for it. But under the HO policy, period, end of story, full stop, no coverage for surface water. But you can't pay for the wind damage. But what if the water splashed onto the roof and like washed away some of the shingles? And that's when it got really, really, really sticky with this. Um, so they basically got to the point where they were doing water lines. So the, the water lines, you know, seven feet up, an eight foot wall, and everything above that was considered to be wind and everything below that was considered to be water. So you're, a lot of adjusters are paying for roofs and maybe second stories or whatever, and then not paying for the, the entire down, the entire first floor of the house. Um, even though there may have been like the wind caused some damage to part of the house where the flood also hit because the flood is trumps it, but through, through that concurrent uh, concurrency pause or clause, um, then it's not covered at all. Make sense? Good times, good times. This is the fun part of the policy on hurricanes, right? So um, contributing con con concurrent, uh, contributes concurrently or in any sequence to the loss, right? So the house gets a bunch of wind damage to it. And then four hours later, the storm surge comes through, right? Flood's gonna trump. It's gonna trump that and it's gonna, it's gonna be not covered. Earth movement is one of these exclusions. This is literally anything that the ground can do, right? Um, any loss caused by resulting from contributing to or aggravated by earthquake, landslide, subsidence, sinkhole, erosion, mud flow, earth sinking, rising, shifting, expanding, contracting, volcanic eruption, um, which means the eruption, explosion, or effusion of a volcano. So. The key ones here that you're going to run into occasionally, especially doing CAT, are going to be shifting, expanding contraction, erosion, right? A lot of times subsidence is when the earth sinks. It's another way of saying sinking. Um, a lot of times the, you know, this happens to like every house. I mean, if it, if it sits there for long enough, it's one of these things that's going to happen to it because the ground is always being, is always being affected by the elements, rain, you know, wind, you know, the earth shaking a little bit here and there, right? Everything will settle um, and it will cause, you know, water might have 
the the grade on uh, you know the dirt that goes up to the side of the house has a little bit of a slope to it like here's your house right so it's graded downwards away from the house so that water when water rain hits the ground it's going to hopefully like sort of flow away from the house to keep it away from the foundation but it may be that you have like gutter breaks and then water washes out the grade on that one side of the house and now it's pointing down towards the house and that fills up with water causes cracks and water to leak in through the basement not covered right period end of story the earth moved and it contributed you know all those things um it says this exclusion applies whether or not the earth movement is combined with water or rain right they just slam the door right on that uh, we do co we do cover only direct resulting loss when caused by fire explosion other than the explosion of a volcano or if an insured peril breakage of glass or safety glazing material um which is a part of a building that's kind of an incomplete sentence right so the earth movement one the door kind of cracks back open if maybe like the neighbor's house had a gas leak and their house exploded and the earth moved and somehow caused damage to the your insurance house right that kind of thing um, it's hard to say what circumstances i haven't encountered this before but there it is right so there are some exceptions to that particular this particular exclusion intentional loss right meaning any loss or damage arising out of any act committed uh by at or by or at the direction of insured or with the intent to cause loss so intention right it's in, intended the intention is not going to be accidental um neglect to use all reasonable means to protect cover property at and after the time of loss right so it's not neglect period right so an example of that would be and we're going to do do this one in our scenarios um insured is uh let's see what's a good example of this we'll go back to my defrosting the chicken one I'm sure it puts a bag this is a real claim bag of uh, frozen chicken in utility sink in the laundry room and plugs the, the sink and turns the cold water on to you know fill it up and then stop so that the chicken can sit there and defrost right he's, he's defrosting the chicken um, he turns the water on and his phone rings and it's his wife and I can't remember what the reason was, but he spent two hours at, pacing back and forth in the backyard and he turned around and glanced at the house and saw water coming out from underneath the door of the, of the, the sliding door in the back of the house um, because the, he neglected to turn off the water. That's not what this is talking about, right? What they're talking about is, is that if um, the, if, if, the, if the, there are a bunch of shingles are blown off the roof and there's uh heavy rains forecasted if the insurer doesn't put a tarp on the roof then the that cracks the door open for the insurance company to say hey listen you know you knew you could look at the, the forecast is you know, you're going to get it on your phone or whatever and it was a hurricane and there was another storm right behind it and it was you know you knew it was going to rain and you didn't do take measures to protect your property from further damage uh, we can say no to the whole thing right it's, they don't often do that but that that kind of they can based on this right um nuclear hazard hopefully we don't have to deal with that um, ordinance law or regulation is excluded right meaning the enforcement of any ordinance law or regulation which require regulates the construction repair demolition of a building blah 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 unless specifically provided under this policy this includes but it's not limited to the removal and disposal of damage or undamaged property results from such an enforcement we do co cover cause cover loss caused by actions of civil authorities to prevent the spread of fire caused by uh, an insured peril right um so in this case if the state or the city the municipality um changes the the like zoning or not the zoning but the uh their ordinances with regard to like electrical right so they outlaw like pin and tube electrical or like you know old-fashioned wiring and you got to have like arc breakers and you got to have all this like more expensive stuff and you decide that number one they change the rules and you have like the old style wiring the insurance is not going to pay for you to upgrade to the new style if you're doing work on the house insurance insurance is not still not going to pay for you to do an upgrade on the house if that's if what you had before right unless there's an exception somewhere in the policy right which i think there is 
um, pollution, right? Power failure, meaning the power failure of, of the failure of power or other utility service if the if the failure takes place away from the insured premises, right? If it, if a peril insured against ensues when the insured premise on the insured premises, we will pay only for the loss caused by that peril. So in this particular case, of power failure off the insured premises is if the grid goes down. It's a general power outage, and you you know you lose uh, refrigerated food loss. Hold on a second, let me double check that. You know what, this one, this is one of those weird ones. It's like, well, I know as an adjuster, I've paid for hundreds of refrigerated food loss claims for houses that just the power just went out, went out uh, off premises, right? If it starts a fire somehow, um, the if a peril insured against, which is fire, ensues on the insured premises, will we'll pay only for loss caused by that peril. So they'll pay for the fire damage, but they won't pay for the power failure damage. And it may be that this, what this really says is um, the situation where you may encounter this is if like there's a power, power outage and the power comes back on with a little bit of a power surge and damages computers and TVs and Xboxes and PlayStation 5s and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, that's not going to be covered. But if a tree limb falls and pulls a power line down on in your yard, in the insured's yard, and it causes power surge, um, and those things are damaged, uh, they don't work after the storm, you know, after they 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 get the power back on, whatever, then that would that wouldn't that would be an on-premises, right? Uh, the next one's war, which includes civil war, insurrection, rebellion, revolution, etc., nuclear weapon or device, even if accidental, uh, water damage. This is another place where, and we're going to go into this in a little bit more depth um, when we do our scenarios. But the water damage one is excludes. This is where the 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 real meat of the part of the policy, which says that it's the second rain hits the ground or any kind of water from any source. Um, it's the second that it touches the ground. It's not covered because it becomes surface water, which is, that if, if that surface water causes damage, it's not covered. Water then seeps into the ground, right? Regardless of its source, water below the surface of the ground includes water, which exerts pressure on or flows, seeps or leaks through any part of a building or other structure, sidewalk, driveway, or swimming pool, right? Uh, water from any source which backs up through sewers or drains or water which enters into and overflows or accidentally discharges from within a sump pump, sump pump, well, sump pump, well, discharge system or other type system designed to remove subsurface water. So that's a sump pump basically is this one, right? Notice that it doesn't say water which backs up um, through the toilet. I mean, you could sort of say backs up through sewers or drains. I don't know if you could say that the toilet is a drain or the a sink is a drain. I mean, it's got a drain in it. That's a that's a gray area one. That's one I'm calling my manager on and saying, hey, listen, you know, the water backed up through the toilet and caused all this damage. Um, we do cover direct loss that follows caused by fire explosion. Part B. The following exclusion applies to coverage A, dwelling in uh, coverage B, and coverage C, fraud, right? We do not provide any coverage at all for any part of a loss before or after, blah, 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 if the, any insured has committed fraud, right? So the, the insurance company is saying, if you commit fraud in, in, in this claim, whether it's, it's the whole thing or it's a little part of it, we can deny this whole thing. Your house burned to the ground, but it's because, you know, you made a fraudulent, you, you tried to put some say that the fence was also damaged and you lit the fence on fire yourself and we figured we found out about it we can deny the whole thing right um part c is following exclusions apply to coverage a only we do not insure loss for any insure for loss caused by any of the following acts or decisions right uh, including the failure to act outside of any person group organization or governmental body you know uh planning construction or maintenance meaning faulty inadequate or defective uh, construction, reconstruction, repair, et cetera. So if you have a loss that ensues or is caused by um, crappy uh, construction or remodeling, uh, the insurance company, according to this, um, can say no, can, can deny that. Design, workmanship, or specifications, siding, or surveying, blah, blah, blah. 
maintenance. So this video is only a small sample of the 27 video complete field ready policy training series found exclusively inside of adjustertvplus.com. Join thousands of others who have benefited from a complete on-demand library of property adjuster trainings, construction damage and material ID, policy, official Xactimate certification trainings, Xactimate mobile, Symbility, it's all in one place. Why try to piece this all together on your own and spend an arm and a leg doing it when you can get it all in one place? I mean, customer call role-playing, negotiations with contractors, tile roofing, Wildfire claims, the most comprehensive collection of hail damage scoping and estimating videos anywhere, period. Live Q&As and trainings, job postings, dogs and cats living together, plaid and stripes, together, makes sense, all on adjustertvplus.com.